So on the down camera here, we can see here's our packet for our calm gauge, uh, just a nice little leather pouch to help protect. So inside what we have is our first part of our gauge, which we use to measure leg lengths, excess weld metal height and misalignment. And you see on this one we have it in both inches and millimetres. Um, a nice easy, easy readout but you can see the, the definition on these lines is not amazing. So best you're going to get is half a millimetre sort of uh, gradient on your sizes. If I spin this over we also have the fillet weld road thickness gauge which moves just in and out on the slider and again we have the, uh, the sizes here in inches and in millimetres and what some people don't realise is if we move this out here we also have an angle gauge and what this helps is between this bottom foot and the side of the cam gauge here we can take um, bevel angles on it and you see that's 0 to 60 degrees and we get a line every 5 degrees so you know, a bevel angle at 35 will set something like that and then we can, we can very quickly check but again you can see with all of these measurements the the, the resolution on it is not amazing so you know you wouldn't put your mortgage on there on the size but it's a good way of checking what what the output is to you know to near enough if we've got a an allowance of three millimeters you know on tolerance then this is more than enough but maybe it wouldn't be good enough for a, something like aerospace or something like that so one of the first things to check with this when you take it out of the packet is that everything's reading zero when it should so the first main one to check is this bar now if i put this flat and then bring the cam gauge down that should read zero but very commonly they don't so we can see here that the millimeters is no is nowhere near there i've got one and a half two millimeters there so what you have to do so I've got a screwdriver over here is undo these two uh, little bolts which should just come off fairly easily try and do it through the camera just just half a turn off on them to make it loose and if we bring that back and then line up the zero point by just pushing the gauge over to place hold it steady and then re-tighten When we then put that back to, to there, we should be reading zero. So we're pretty much bang on there now. And of course, the same with the, the, the throat fitness gauge. If you put that flat and push the gauge right out, we should be reading zero on there. This, this one is not normally a problem. The main problem with this gauge is that it can slide out like that. I mean, I've got another one over here and you can see that this this is very loose and it, it moves around and gets stuck so you might just have to tighten up this um, this nut here just to, to get it so it doesn't bounce out these these guide posts but that's that's the overall look of uh, the cam gauge and uh, it's it's quick calibration checks before before you So starting with excess weld metal, what we do is we bring our gauge into position, making sure that our two flat feet are in contact with the material. Bring out the nose of the bridge gauge to make contact with the highest point of the excess weld metal's cap. And what we can then do is just read the size we're given. Like I was saying before, it's not a massive, you know, you're not going to get 0.2 of a mil sort of difference, but within half a mil is, is all right for most fabrication items. But be aware that if we have misalignment within that butt, 
you can see here that that misalignment is driving out a change in cap height. So even though the, the, the gauge hasn't changed, it's now buried within the material. So you might actively read higher cap heights or excess weld metal heights due to misalignment. So we've got to be aware of that and check it out during our in inspection. So for fillet welds, the way we measure the leg length, and then here, here's a fillet weld. So what is leg length? Well, if we draw our cross where our projected planes would be, these long side measurements are our, our leg lengths. So to measure those, we can just bring in our gauge again, bring it down, and there we get our measurement off, off the side. The thing with this is to realize that if you have quite smooth concave fillet welds at the toes of the weld, you might actually miss the beginning of the weld. So you might have to manually view it and then bring the gauge back or forward to actually hit the contact of the, the weld toe, not begin to weld metal because it's too smooth to catch the gauge. And again, misalignment can throw these out as well, you know, especially on thin materials. It's not always a 90 degree plane between the incoming member and the base material. So it, it's things to be aware of all the time. So for fraud thickness, here's where it is. So there's our plane of our, our um, projected planes of the, the straight lens. And then at 45 degrees out from root to face centre is where our fraud thickness is. So this is driving the strength of the fillet weld. And to measure that, we spin the gauge around and use our fillet weld gauge length and then read off our number. The thing here is to make sure you're going the right way on the gauge. If I can see 15 millimetres like I can on that gauge there, it's to come like down or up from there correctly. Because we do see sometimes people reading 16 millimetres as 14 mil. And just take your time, read the gauge, make sure you're reading accurately. So as a quick review then, we've got our leg length, excess weld metal and misalignment height running very much off the, uh, the nose part of the gauge. The sliding bar on the other side there we use for our fraud thicknesses. And remember, hidden behind the nose of the cam gauge we can take simple bevel angles from that as well. So I hope that's useful if you've never used a cam gauge before or you're about to use a cam gauge for the first time within say your C-SWIP 3.0 course. That's a very quick run over and a show of where the measurements can be taken, how they can go wrong and a little bit of how to check over your gauge before you use it. And just remember to do that check every time before use because they're easily knocked and uh, you don't want to be out by a few mil, especially in an exam. So thank you for that. Best of luck with your studies and I hope to see you again soon.